Hello students, welcome to grade 10 science lesson and I'm your teacher Mrs. Mona James. For today's lesson, we're going to learn about the line of evidences that support plate movement. Have you seen a map? Probably yes, have you noticed that the shape of the continents almost fit together? If you noticed that, you have same observation with Alfred Wegener. In 1912, Alfred Wegener, a German meteorologist and geophysicist proposed the theory of continental drift. According to this theory, the Earth was made up of a single supercontinent through most of geological time that eventually separated and drifted apart, forming into the seven continents we have today. Alfred Wegener collected diverse pieces of evidence to support his theory. There are four evidences that support the continental drift theory. First is the geological fit evidence. Wegener first thought of this idea by noticing that the different large masses of the Earth almost fit together like a jigsaw. Geological fit evidence, is the matching of large-scale geological features, on different continents. It has been noted that the coastlines of South America and West Africa seem to match up, the continental shelf of America fit, closely to Africa as shown in the figures. Another important piece of evidence in the continental drift theory is the fossil relevance. There are various examples of fossils found on separate continents and in no other regions. This indicates that these continents had to be once joined together because the extensive oceans between these land masses act as a type of barrier for fossil transfer. Four fossil examples include, the Mesosaurus, Cynognathus, Lystrosaurus, and Glossopterus. The Mesosaurus is known to have been a type of reptile, similar to the modern crocodile, which propelled itself through water with its long hind legs and limber tail. It lived during the early Permian period. 286 to 258 million years ago, and its remains are found solely in South Africa and Eastern South America. Now if the continents were in still their present positions, there is no possibility that the Mesosaurus would have the capability to swim across such a large body of ocean as the Atlantic because it was a coastal animal. The now extinct Cynognathus, which translates to dog jaw, was a mammal-like reptile. Roaming the terrains during the Triassic period, 250 to 240 million years ago, the Cynognathus was as large as a modern wolf. Its fossils are found only in South Africa and South America. As a land-dominant species, the Cynognathus would not have been capable of migrating across the Atlantic. The Lystrosaurus, which translates to shovel reptile, is thought to have been an herbivore with a stout build like a pig. It is approximated that it grew up to 1 meter in length and was relatively dominant on land during the early Triassic period, 250 million years ago. Lystrosaurus fossils are only found in Antarctica, India, and South Africa. Similar to the land-dwelling Cynognathus, the Lystrosaurus would have not had the swimming capability to traverse any ocean. Possibly the most important fossil evidence found is the plant, Glossopterus. Known as a woody, seed-bearing tree, the Glossopterus is named after the Greek description for tongue due to its tongue-shaped leaves and is the largest genus of the extinct descendant of seed ferns. Reaching as tall as 30 meters, the Glossopterus emerged during the early Permian period, 299 million years ago, and became the dominant land plant species until the end of the Permian. The Glossopterus fossil is found in Australia, Antarctica. India, South Africa, and South America, all the southern continents. Now, the Glossopterus seed is known to be large and bulky and therefore could not have drifted or flown across the oceans to a separate continent. Therefore, the continents must have been joined at least one point in time in order to maintain the Glossopterus wide range across the southern continents. If the continents of the southern hemisphere are put together, the distribution of these four fossil types form continuous patterns across continental boundaries. Of course, possible explanations are brought to attention. 
One explanation is the species could have migrated via land bridge or swam to the other continents. However, a land bridge is not applicable due to the differences in densities between the continents and oceans for in violation of the isostasy concept. Another evidence that support continental drift theory is the evidence from the rocks and mountains. If we will analyze all the rocks and mountains in different continents we will see that the rock layers and mountain ranges in some continents line up and match perfectly together like those in South America and Africa, and North America. Rocks have the same type and age, identical rocks, of the same type and age, are found on both sides of the Atlantic Ocean. Wegener said the rocks had formed side by side and that the land had since moved apart. Mountain ranges with the same rock types, structures, and ages are now on opposite sides of the Atlantic Ocean. The Appalachians of the eastern United States and Canada, for example, are just like mountain ranges in, eastern Greenland, Ireland, Great Britain, and Norway. Wegener concluded that they formed as a single mountain range that was separated as the continents drifted. Here is the other evidence that support the theory of continental drift. It is the shift of climate over time, or the ancient climate. Grooves and rock deposits left by ancient glaciers are found today on different continents very close to the equator. This would indicate that the glaciers either formed in the middle of the ocean and or covered most of the earth. Today glaciers only form on land and nearer the poles. Wegener thought that the glaciers were centered over the southern land mass close to the South Pole and the continents moved to their present positions later on. Wegener also noted the unusual deposits of coal in the South Polar regions. The fossils of tropical plants, in the form of coal deposits, were found in Antarctica. This led to the theory that this landmass was previously much closer to the equator where the climate is warm and lush vegetation could flourish. Let's summarize the different evidences that support the continental drift theory. First, that of the continents wherein the land masses of the earth fits together perfectly like a jigsaw puzzle. Second is the fossil relevance. What are the different fossils studied by Wagner? Those are the, the Mesosaurus. Cynognathus, Lustrosaurus, and Glossopterus. Third evidence is the evidence from rocks and mountains, in which we can see that the rocks in different continents have the same, agent composition. Last is the ancient climate, this show that the continent with warm temperature today once had cold temperature and vice versa. It is supported by the glacier marks and coal deposits. On the other hand, some scientists at that time rejected the continental drift theory because Wegener failed to present a concrete mechanism on how continents drifted. He cannot explain what caused the continents to move in spite of all the evidence that he has gathered. Other evidence that support plate movement will be discussed on part 2 of our video. Thank you for watching and see you on our next video. This is your science teacher, Mrs. Mona James.